We're moving to chapter 45 uh, on environmental law. Uh, and again, a, 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 this area is not related to the other areas. It's a standalone which I think is actually kind of nice to sort of wrap up our course here. Uh, you know, as a business manager, you're looking at all sorts of uh, points on the compass where your business activities could harm uh, society and, or individuals in society. And the question for you as a manager would be, where are those areas? One is environment. Um, and this one is regulated both uh, by state and federal. I think it depends on your state, like for instance, Washington, we regulate it more than the federal government um, in some cases. There, there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a caveat I want to include in that is that the, the state has the inherent right to police itself, which means to clean up its health, welfare, the environment. Those are the, what we refer to uh, classically as the police powers. The federal government does not have this, but it does have the ability to regulate interstate commerce. And so where interstate commerce is involved, the federal government can regulate um, uh, the environment. And that is, for instance, the Federal Clean Air Act, which was one of the most brilliant laws ever. Um, uh, frankly, we all need clean air. Life can't exist without clean air. Um, and yet we didn't think of this until uh, late in our government where uh, the pollution was getting far, far beyond what uh, we, were, we would call healthy or safe. So uh, with regard to the Clean Air Act, we move to slide um, number seven. I apologize, um, I've got bifocals. And so uh, we looked at slide number seven and we start talking about federal law. But there's, again, also uh, Washington has some wonderful laws in this area too. So with the federal government though, let's go back in constitution, doesn't, uh, this is not an area where the states gave up authority. This is an area where we refer to it as shared authority. So the states reserve to themselves certain powers, but in some cases, if it's an interstate commerce, the federal government can get into it. The two have worked together hand in glove, although we're seeing the current administration pull back on protections, uh, simply refuse to enforce the law regarding protecting the environment. Um, and and I could give you a number of examples. It's just a fact-based, uh, it's a fact matter um, that the federal government today is pulling back on the Cleaner Act and a bunch of other uh, laws to protect the environment. Um, so uh, as these two work hand in glove, we see states kind of stepping up a bit. It depends on your state, though. There are many states that say that's fine. Let's just simply um, eat up the air and, and pollute the rivers and allow the coal dust to continue to flow. Um, uh, obviously, I was referencing West Virginia. So do think about how both areas of state and federal uh, regulate this one particular um, concern we have, which is we only have one environment and how do we treat that? Uh, do we let the chaos reign or do we try to control that? Um, so I have a, 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 a here at the end, a, a little bit of a discussion uh, to give you a sense of this one in a bigger, in a bigger way, in a sort of 30,000 foot way. Uh, initially, um, this is page sli uh, slide two, page two. Uh, initially, there were common law laws. You didn't have to worry about states legislating their courts' decis decisions that provided some stability. People could manage their property, but if it un unreasonably interfered with others, then that would be an environmental disaster for some neighbor of mine ad with adjacent property or uh, contiguous uh, property. Um, the uh, the idea would be, for example, if I wanted to dam up my pond, that would reduce the water that flowed out of it to my neighbor, but my neighbor needs it because of his livestock. Uh, I've harmed the environment for him. And so there were nuisance laws and, and either both individual or uh, referred to as private nuisance, or there were uh, public nuisance laws that the courts would enforce as the courts established these standards from case to case. Um, so the, um, the, the thing is, um, uh, the, the federal, this is on slide three, the federal state, uh, at the federal and state governments regulate this area. Uh, agencies are in charge mostly to handle these problems uh, from uh, dealing with um, polluters, uh, people that just dump trash, uh, loggers that don't replant. There's all sorts of areas where you could harm the environment. Uh, I wanted to make this uh, 
this particular discussion fun, so I have your project uh, there uh, for you to discuss your favorite part of the environment. So again, we're not making you into attorneys, but as business owners, as business managers, you need to be very much aware of this area that you could harm uh, and again, get yourself in trouble by crossing of the rules and laws. Um, so the project asks you to pick your favorite area of uh, regulation. What do you like uh, about your environment? Hopefully we all have some appreciation of our environment from clean air to clean water to um, uh, safe, um, um, the, the, to safe areas that we can travel such as parks and whatever. Um, the biggest issue has to do, I think, with the last discussion under the page 10 of the Toxic Substances Control Act. Uh, this is the one that requires anybody that's in charge of a, 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 a hazard or a hazardous chemical or has any type of potential devastating uh, harm uh, that they can cause to, the, to society, basically to be responsible for that. Um, so this is the one that you hear a lot more litigation about because um, there is some type of uh, hazardous waste site and it was supposed to be recovery, who's in charge, because who, who created that. Um, sometimes this, the, the person who created it no longer is in business and the state has to step up, the federal government has to step up, and we as taxpayers have to clean that up. That's unfortunate, but uh, there's an economic balance here. Uh, and we hope that the individuals who create these uh, hazardous situations will clean them up and be responsible. We have laws that require that, but if that person dies or that person's uh, company, if the company is, is, is under, it, it is what it is and law doesn't do a very good job of, of resurrecting the dead, so to speak. So uh, do pay attention to these. Um, I do, at this end here, uh, want to kind of inject a, a concept uh, because environmental law is probably the one area where um, we're not paying enough attention. Uh, we, we hear, or we know from science, facts are that um, the world is changing through our influence. And I, 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 I may get in trouble for this, but I do think about it in a, just a very visual way. You think of taking out all of that uh, oil from the, the earth, uh, wherever, from the shale in Canada, here in the United States, to the uh, buried oil in, in, in the Middle East, and you take all of that and you just throw it up into the air uh, in the form of, uh, of gas, where we use it, we burned it, and now it's floating. It doesn't really change, you know, it, the volume uh, is, is, is still there molecularly. It, 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 if you think about taking all that up and just burning it uh, through the form of car exhaust and whatever, industry exhaust, it's in our atmosphere, it's there. It doesn't leave somehow and venture off into space. We're doing quite a deal here. We're, we're really turning around our world. Um, so this is something that we can handle, we can control, we can stop. Science, again, facts tell us that it is possible to you know, carbon scrub the atmosphere. We need to do these things. So I want to help you with your law. I want to help you with uh, this particular area of, of concern. And it's this idea. Uh, take out a sheet of paper, uh, draw a picture of what you think chaos is. Um, it could be a squiggle, it could be um, a building being burnt, uh, it could be people being hurt, and shot, and mutilated. Uh, typically, it is one of those three. And, you know, how we define chaos through our experiences uh, doesn't have a lot of variety. It's, it's usually just one of those three. But do think of that. How would you draw a picture of chaos? So for me, this is my picture of chaos, where the environment is gone. Um, where it is uh, both uh, black at night and black in the day because of um, the polluted skies. Uh, rivers are catching on fire, which these both have happened. Uh, these both exist because of the, uh, our human uh, touch, our human effort. So uh, chaos is the uh, enemy uh, um, for us all. It doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum. Chaos is the enemy for us all. Um, and which we all share a sim similar uh, interest in protecting our environment. Uh, certainly we can understand and agree that indeed anything that injects chaos into our environment really should be curbed. So um, 
uh, when you think about this particular area, uh, think about how law, or the rule of law, how law reigns, how law is in charge, not people, but laws, laws that are designed to uh, prevent chaos, that's the right system where you think about the law is an antidote to the chaos that you've just pictured. In other words, the picture you've drawn, what is that, what is that thing that stops it? Um, and it would be a, a rule, a law that says, let's prevent this, let's order our society, let's, let's help civilization survive. Um, so the, the rule of law, how law reigns, how law is in charge, is then the critical issue that follows that. Okay, here's a picture of chaos. Here's the antidote. In other words, what stops chaos? That's law. Well, what do we do with law? Well, we make it supreme. We well, let it run our lives as opposed to kings and tyrants run our lives. So do think about uh, this particular project, what in, in interests you in your environment. Um, I don't want to make it political, but I do have to raise this issue, which is we're learning, we're seeing it, um, that our environment is changing through our own hand. How can we curb that? the rule of law has to be the case. Uh, we have to have laws, and we have to keep those laws and let those laws be in charge uh, of, our, 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 of our security, of our order uh, that is indeed the antithesis of all that chaos.